Hey guys, and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on the Nord Piano 88. I'll tell you why I bought it, and I'll tell you also why I'm selling it. But first, let's do something about this very annoying camera position. Okay, so I've powered on the Nord Piano. It's connected to my Roland Cube amp, which you can see in the shot over there. Okay, and it's not going to be great audio quality in this video, not of the Nord Piano itself, because I'm playing it through a mono guitar amp. And then you're picking it up on my lav microphone that I'm using to record my voice. But uh, fear not, I have other videos on the channel which show the sounds of this thing in high fidelity. This video is more of a chat really than, a, than an audio demonstration. So why did I buy this and what is it good at? Well, the first thing I'll mention, this is the very first Nord Piano, the Nord Piano 1 that I think was released more or less five years ago. And since then they've come a Nord, it's become a Nord Piano 2 and very recently a Nord Piano 3. And these are seriously expensive instruments, guys. Yes, these are premium prices from Nord as usual. The Nord Piano 3, I think is about two and a half thousand dollars. But as usual, nobody wants the first version of anything. So I was able to pick this one up for about half price. In fact, a little bit less than half price. And the thing is the Nord Piano 1 does everything I want. The features that they've introduced in the Nord Piano 2 and the Nord Piano 3 don't appeal to me whatsoever. The Nord Piano 1 was the most pure original incarnation of the Nord Piano. Then they started to add synthesizer sample libraries in the Piano 2 so you could do layers and splits. The Nord Piano 3 I think they took the concept even further and it's come further away from being just a pure piano. And when I bought this, I wanted something that I could just switch on, back to basics, just me and a piano, no distractions, and the bare minimum of controls. And I think the Nord Piano 1 does it better than any of the other Nord Pianos in the range. Plus, it's also the cheapest. People are selling these old ones and nobody wants them because they're, they're old. But uh, for me, it was absolutely perfect. So some of my long-term viewers might remember me doing some demos of the Nord Stage 2, which I borrowed from a friend. And I really, really enjoyed the piano sounds on that thing. It's the Nord Piano Library. There's a bunch of grand piano sounds, upright piano sounds, and of course the electric piano sounds. And all of them have a lot of character and are really, really enjoyable to play. And I find myself wanting an instrument that I could use to play these fabulous Nord piano sounds. So I've been considering buying a stage for myself. I've been considering buying a electro perhaps that can also load the same samples. But this is what came up first and at a really good price. So I bought it and it's a real nice thing to have an extra long keyboard. The 61 keys aren't really enough for playing any serious performances on a piano. Also, this one has the really nice weighted action, which I haven't had for a very while. So that's what I was looking for. I wanted something with more than 61 keys. I wanted something with this, this Nord piano library that I really enjoy. And the weighted keys, a nice high quality keyboard was also a feature. And I also wanted the no frills. I wanted a piano that does really nothing more than just that. And this, this fit the bill, I think. And look, it's red with wooden end cheeks. So in a moment, I'll give you a tour of the front panel controls here. But before doing that, I just wanted to mention one other reason I bought this. As you know, I've been doing lots and lots of tech reviews and demos of digital synths and stuff, which I really enjoy. Don't get me wrong, but I wanted to get back down to basics and do some performance stuff on the, on the channel. I really wanted just to sit down with the piano and play some songs for you. I do enjoy demonstrating and learning and planning the videos where we do the old gear and the synthesizers, but I wanted to do some videos where I actually improved as a player, where I was practicing things doing a video and coming out at the end of the experience as a slightly better player than I was going in. Because that's what it's all about really. All these synths and pianos are fabulous, but I really want to develop my playing skills as well at the same time. So that's another reason for getting this. It's a way for me 
to get motivated to do more performance videos on the channel. So let's talk about the controls here on the front panel. One thing I really, really love is these five live view controls. What you can do is if we dial in a sound here, we've got piano number three, grand piano number three, we can add some crazy effects to that one. We can jump to another live sound where we have something completely different. Let's have some electric piano sound. But if we jump back to number one, it's remembered. My crazy sound that I had there. Let's do something on three. Let's take a clavinet. And now it's remembered those without me having to save anything. I really like it. And it even remembers if you power off the keyboard, what sounds you have saved there. I never ever use any of the preset storage features on this keyboard because these five are sufficient for me. And there's so few parameters, it's very easy to dial in what you want. Let's jump back to number one, switch off the effects. So the first thing is you can enable some sympathetic string resonance, which gives you some nice, realistic string noises when you hold down the sustain pedal and press the chords, but you don't notice it so much in normal playing, to be honest. It's a little bit gimmicky, perhaps, I would say. You can adjust the velocity sensitivity of the keyboard there as well. But of course, here is the important thing. Here we switch between the different categories of the pianos available to us. You can have grand pianos. Once again, I remind you the sound quality is not great here through the Roland amp there. I have three different pianos loaded. I mean, you should be able to hear that they're different, but it's not a, a true representation of how good they sound. We have upright pianos. This is my personal favorite. This is the mellow upright you can see on the screen, perhaps. I don't have a pedal connected at the moment, but I'll show you that at the end if I remember. There's a special triple pedal, a Nord triple pedal that you get together with this instrument. But through stereo with a bit of reverb, which we can dial in here at the end. Different reverb types, and this is the amount of reverb. such a beautiful sound. It's worth owning this Nord piano just for the mellow upright sound. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I've got two upright pianos loaded, three grand pianos. The Nord piano library has maybe 12 of each, I think, but there isn't enough memory on this one to load them all in at one time. At one time. And we're going to talk a bit about that later in the drawbacks. So in the electric piano section, switch off the reverb. Now, I've always thought that the Nord Rhodes and Wurlitzer samples are the very best out there. I really do. And I've loaded three different, three or four different ones here. I can't play for you now because I'm hunched over the camera. warm and rich that one, Nefertiti. Actually through an old guitar amp, the Rhodes sounds at its best, I think. and so playable, such nice dynamics, really are hard to beat. Okay, so that's what we have loaded there. We're going to skip over the electric grand because I haven't imported any electric grand samples. We've got the clav sounds. And these, we'll leave it on the clav because these really benefit from some of these other features. Let's put some effects on, many different types of effects, very easy to access, all on the front panel. Let 
me adjust that for you. We can add some distortion, which is really nice on the clavinet as well. <laughs> Probably too much distortion. Compressor, various different types of amplifier emulations here, various old fenders and things emulated. Let's try a... It's not sounding great through the guitar amp, but trust me, the, uh, the distortion effects are really rather nice. Variety of choruses, tremolos and things, I'm not going to demonstrate them all for you today, but the, the variety of effects are really superb and the easy way you control them just with one knob, which usually is more than ample. I enjoy it a lot. Next we have a equaliser section, also very nice hands-on control. I use this a lot with the pianos. If you want to take the brightness, take the top end off a piano, make it more mellow, very easy to do. To take wind down the treble, boost up the bass, that's with some equalization without. So there you go, that's a whistle stop tour of the controls of the Nord Piano. Everything you need really is there and hands on and no more, no less. Everything you need is there and nothing that you don't need. So then, my friendly viewers, you're probably very confused. I've just spent 10 minutes saying how much I love this piano and how the controls are good and the sounds are great. But I also mentioned at the beginning of the video that I'm selling this. So you're wondering what the heck is wrong with this guy? What's he on? Well, let me explain. This is a big, heavy beast. It's hard to get in the car if I want to do any jams with anybody. Not that I am at the moment, but in the future, who knows? It's a very heavy beast. It's got weighted keys. I think that's what adds to the weight. It's about 15, 16 kilos, I think. Uh, but it's too wide to sit in the back seat of the car, so you've got to fold the seats down and shove it in that way. What else? Now, we've got 88 keys, of course, which might seem like a good thing, but I'm not really an 88 key guy. No, I spend most of the time playing in the middle of the keyboard. As I said in the beginning, 61 keys are not enough, but 88 is just too much. I'm often playing down here. But seriously, I never use the keys right at the bottom, and I never use the keys. Who uses these? Maybe once in a while for a special effect you can go all the way up to the top. But mainly I'm playing in this range here. So I was beginning to think, is there anything on the market that's got great piano sounds, slightly smaller keyboard, slightly more compact, less weight to lug around, and easy to chuck in the car? And yes, I did find something. I'm going to show you that right now. The reason this is for sale is I found something else that matches even more closely my requirements. Now, if I come back to the camera here, I saw a trick on Casey Neistat's vlogs, which I'm going to try and replicate. Let's have a go. So if I just loosen this off, I think the technique is called a pan cut or something. It's a nice trick. I'm going to have a go at doing it right now. Well, I hope that worked. I'm not sure. We'll know when I start editing the video, but it was fun to try. It looks effortless when he does these things. It's actually quite difficult to do. But anyway, you don't care about that. You care about this. What Woody have we got in the case? Let's have a look. Obviously, some kind of Nord. You can see that much, which is nice. I did tell you I enjoyed the Nord Piano Library very much, so we should be able to use it on this one as well. But you don't know exactly what model we have in the case. Woody, what's in the case? Yes, it is, in fact, the Nord Electro 4. The Nord Electro 4. This is interesting. Let me explain. So the first thing to note, this is a 73 key keyboard. It's about 
this much. You can't see my hands. Well, it's about a foot shorter, foot and a half, two foot shorter than the 88 note, key, 88 note keyboard. It's not a weighted keyboard, however, but I've owned Electros before and I really enjoy this waterfall. That means it's just flush on the front here. Waterfall, semi-weighted action. It's really great. It's fabulous for playing the electric pianos, but I find it to work really nicely on the acoustic pianos as well. And of course, for clavinet and for organ, which the Electro has, the piano doesn't, of course, the clavinet and organ is absolutely perfect. It really is wonderful to play. The clavinet sound on the piano is not much fun to play at all because it's a weighted keyboard and the real Honer clavinet doesn't have a weighted keyboard. It's hard to play. This thing is compatible with the Nord Piano Library, which is great, although it doesn't have a lot of memory for storing sounds. The Nord Piano has half a gigabyte. This one has a couple of hundred megabytes, but we'll just have to live with that. I, I can deal with that compromise to get the Hammond organ as well, because the Hammond organ is one of my favorite instruments of all time as well. And on the Nord Electro 4, they're using their latest Hammond emulation from their C2 organ, the, the very best they have at the moment, I do believe. You may have seen my very early video when I revealed to you what my very favorite keyboard is of all time, and it is the Nord Electro 2. But I've never owned anything more recent than the Nord Electro 2, so this is completely new territory for me. The 3 and the 4 I've skipped over. I did consider buying a Nord Electro 5, but for reasons I'll explain in another video, the Electro 5 is completely uninteresting to me. Not interested at all. This was the model I singled out, the Nord Electro 4, which isn't available anymore, but you can find them used if you're lucky. And I specifically wanted the 73 note keys, and I wanted the LED draw bars here. But we'll save that topic for another video. I did get kind of lucky. These don't come up for sale very often. The Nord Electro 4 was only in production for quite a short time, I think. And to find this particular model, the 73, in such excellent condition was a real score. Okay, I'm gonna put the piano back on the stand here and I'll wrap up with some final thoughts. I also did tell you that I would mention the drawbacks of the Nord piano, so let's talk about some of the disadvantages. Okay then, so the piano is back on the stand and I promised to tell you about the drawbacks, here goes. It is that half a gigabyte of memory that is allocated for storing the samples that you download from the Nord piano library. There are about 12 grand piano samples, different grand pianos that they've sampled, there are 12 uprights, more or less. We have a same number of electric pianos. There are clavinets, electric grands, whatnot. And they come in three different sizes. When you download them, you can choose the extra large, the large, the medium, and the small. This thing, the 500 megabytes of memory on here, is far from enough to download and store all of the pianos in any size. If you were to download them in the extra large size, you can probably get three or four different instruments on this one, which might not be enough, especially if you're like me, you want to try them out and see which one you like the best, compare them against each other. Well, the trouble is you can only get three or four of the, what did I just say, 40 different sampled instruments at any one time. So maybe you want to make a compromise then, okay, let's download the medium size, then you might be able to get 10 different sample packs on board. And what I had to do to get the number of pianos that I showed you earlier, I think I even downloaded the small size. Now then, for an instrument that costs $2,000, $2,500, that seems like a very tough compromise to swallow. The Nord Piano, the latest one, the Nord Piano 3, has I think a gigabyte or something. They have increased the memory, but it's still not enough to download and install everything in the best quality. You have to, if you want lots of pianos, you have to have the small ones, which have a fewer number of samples and not the long release samples, no sympathetic resonance. If you want lots of pianos, you have to have poor quality ones. Or if you want the top quality samples, you can only have a few of them on board at any time. And this seems like a real tough choice to have to make. For the premium amount of money that Nord are charging people for this, I really do want to have it all loaded at any one time. Half a gigabyte, one gigabyte, this is just nonsense to me. 
I've got a USB stick thing, you know, the memory stick that I bought from eBay. That was 16 gigabytes. Cost me $6 or something. You can get an SSD, which is 40 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes. They cost just 30 or $40. And on that one, on a 30 or 40 gigabyte drive, you could store all of the samples from the Nord Piano Library at the ultra highest quality and there'd be enough space to store them all. So I really don't quite understand why Nord are forcing us to pick and choose samples from the library. Another thing is when you transfer them over here, when you get tired of one sample, swap it out and want to load in a new one, it's about a 20 minute process. So if you want to load a new piano just before the gig, make sure you allocate enough time to do so. One theory I have about this crazy small amount of memory is that they're using flash memory. You, you probably noticed when I was changing sounds, it was pretty much instantaneous. So they're using some very high speed ROM flash memory, a bit like the Motif, the latest Motif XF. I suppose if they were to use a commercial SSD disc, even though it's very fast, I don't think it's instantaneous. And you might have to wait, I don't know, I'm guessing half a second or a second when you change sounds, but that's a compromise I'd be willing to take. I'd rather have all of the sounds on board and wait half a second or so when I change sounds. That to me seems much better than having to choose on my computer which sounds to load over here. It takes 20 minutes and it's just oh, a bit of a drag to be honest. But really that is the only drawback with this instrument. Everything else about it I absolutely love. This is great and I can warmly recommend it if you can live with that limitation and come on it's not such a big deal really it's just a bit of a niggle to be honest it's a, a typical first world problem i guess uh, would i recommend one of these yes i would but uh, perhaps you should do like me and see if you can find a nord piano one or a nord piano two because they're about half the price of the brand new nord piano three and perhaps like me you would actually prefer the stripped down back to basics no frills attitude of the original Nord Piano. So that's it for now. I hope you found this video interesting. I would appreciate it if you leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think of the Nord Piano and the Nord Piano Library in general. I love reading your comments. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you don't want to miss my upcoming videos. We're going to feature the Nord Electro here in detail, believe you me. Thanks for watching today. I'll see you again real soon. Cheerio. Nord Piano Shop.